rabbit's horn. Yeah, yeah. So, what is that? Uh, how does that shloka go, Satish ji? Yeah. I had to bring the book. Uh, it's, it's not with me, but it says uh, we recently covered that shloka. Yeah. It says uh, like uh, an example of uh, yeah. Mithya. So to give, explain the Mithya, he says this like a, a, a barren woman. Right. Talking, uh, no, decorating himself with the flowers grown in Akasha. Right. Drinking water from Mirage. And then uh, he made a bow and arrow using a rabbit's horn. So all are impossible. So you can't give that example. That, that's what he says. So I have made the impossible possible. The human yeah. being is so powerful that he can make the impossible possible. Correct. So Bhagavan has to salute us. <laughs> because Bhagavan says, even I can't do what you're doing. <laughs> okay, Vaidya go ahead. Uh, so, a couple of questions. Um, you said, uh, uh, I think I missed one word. This uh, Bhagwan, you, you had mentioned Bhagwan's creation is an astho creation. And I think what you had said was Adhishthana, Adhyasa, and then one more word you used. So, I missed that part. I wanted to ask you a clarification on that. Okay. Adhishthana. Adhishthana is Bhagwan. I understood that. And Adhyasa is a projection. So the world is a projection, just like the pot is a projection on clay. Right. And then you use one more word to, uh, to in Sanskrit word to connect it. Adhyasa. 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 Yeah. Adhishtana, Adhyasa. Sambandha. Use... Sambandha. Huh? Sambandha. What Sambandha. is the relation? What is the relation? What is the relationship between clay and pot? That is the question mm -hmm. we are talking. Yeah. First of all, clay and pot are they two different objects that we have sorted out. We said no, they are not two different objects. And we are trying to analyze that and we we'll say, okay, if there are something is there, clay is not pot, but pot is clay. Pot is entirely clay. So, yeah. what is the relationship between those two? If we ask, that is Satyam Mithya Sambandaha or Adhishthana Adhyasa Sambandaha. Hmm. Projection. One is Adhishthanam, another is a projection on that Adhishthanam. Mm -hmm. What is the relationship between snake and rope? Yeah, same way. The snake is a projection. Projection, purely but, a projection. Yeah. Yeah. But there, there the projection is more like a Pradipasika Satyam yeah. kind of projection, right? Right. And the world is a Vyavaharika Satyam projection. Yeah. So Therefore, what are the differences between snake rope and pot clay? Right? Yeah. What are the differences? One difference is snake rope, rope snake is a pratibhasika satya. Means what? It is projected only by one person at a particular time. Correct, correct. I will be seeing a rope, you will be seeing a snake. Same right. time. Okay. Right. Two different objects are being perceived as it right. were. Okay. And so we don't have, we will not agree on our experiences. Yeah. Because here, all of us will have to agree that there is an object. You call yeah. it maybe in a different language, different word is used, but that word yeah. means pot, etc. All that we agree. Second, uh, second uh, difference is what? Yeah, pot continues to remain. Snake can go away also. Mm -hmm. Snake can go away. Third difference is what? After the snake goes away, snake can come back also. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Until you get upset and say, who kept this rope here? Come on, push it out in the corner. Leave it out. Don't. This is not the place. This slope is scaring all of us. Okay. So. Correct. So, yeah. So, I got that now. A uh, related question is, so, you know, in this um, uh, verse, it also, uh, Bhagavan says, Mamatma. And then you said that Adi Shankara says, uh, Mamatma in the sense that, uh, you know, in the common understanding, we think that the self is an object that belongs to me, right? Or something like that, you know, that uh, that is, that is, I am different from the self, even like that, or the self has to be discovered, like examples that you gave. 
But in this case, when Bhagwan says myself, uh, what is the right way to understand that? So, so right, the right way to understand is Aham Actually, Ishwara, right? Aham Atma is the right way to understand. Uh -huh. Aham Atma. Hmm. Aham Atma hmm. Bhuta Bhava. Aham Bhuta Bhava. I am the creator of this world. Mm -hmm. Aham as Ishwara. Correct. Aham as Ishwara. And, but your Aham not being different than my Aham. Mm -hmm. Your Aham not being different than my Aham. Your Atma not right. being different than my Atma. Mm -hmm. Anybody else can also. Arjuna, if you follow what I'm saying, you can say the same thing. Aham Bhuta Bhavanaha. That's the meaning of that. Mm. Correct. Siti Upadhariya. That's why he's keeping on saying. Pashya. Pashya means what? Now nah, I'm not showing some magic and I want you to see magic and all. No, no, no. no. Pashya means see. Jani he. Okay. Vijani he. Understand what I'm saying. Understand. Pashya. Later on he's going to say next to Upadhariya. That also means the same thing. Uh. Yeah. It's meant to be understood, my dear friend. That's what he's saying. Okay. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. Then, and I'm then not I'm not Sorry. 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 I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I, I just. I'm not coming here to impress you. I'm coming here to teach you. Hmm. Impression is different from teaching. Hmm. You can be an impressive teacher. That is different. But <laughs> the goal is not impression making. The goal is to teach. Yeah. So you were saying Bhuta Bhavana, what does it mean? I think. Yeah, Bhuta Bhavana is creator. Uh, Bhuta uh, Bhavana, creator. And then Bhuta Brit is a sustainer, right? Correct. Sustainer of beings. Right. Correct. Okay. Correct. Bhuta Brit Vishnu. Hmm. So he's saying, I am I am Brahma, I am Vishnu, I am Shiva. Hmm. That is why Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara. Hmm. Yeah. How, can Guru, how can Guru be Brahma? How can Guru be Vishnu? It's, this is why. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jai Kumar. Sure. Uh, Jai Kumar Ji, Veda, you say uh, Bhuta Bhavana, Bhuta Prus, then uh, Bhuta Laya is then uh, it's like uh, Destroyer. So, what did we discuss? We discussed Layal in the last chapter, correct? Yes. What was your understanding of Laya there? Uh, Laya was uh, uh, it's like uh, creation and destruction happens at the same time. So, we are saying, what is how are we going to understand Laya? Are we going to use the word destruction to understand Laya? Uh, how, do we, how do we understand the word destruction? And how do we, how should we understand laya? Okay, this is what we are. See, we don't want to. The mistake we should not do is translate laya as destruction and then understand destruction. Now we have to try to understand laya. What laya is, and then we can use some words and we whatever word we want to use we can use. Generally, we use the word resolve. In the Vedanta class, we have to be careful. And uh, destruction is also laya. But laya need not be destruction. Laya can be change also. Any change also is a laya. Right? So laya. So things, the, the, the laya means the unmanifestation. How about, how about that? Avyaktam. Vyaktam, avyaktam. We talked about that in the last chapter, correct? Like my vasanas are manifest in my dream. In my dream, all the things I know which are there in my mind, avyaktam in my mind, suddenly becomes vyaktam. Becomes vyaktam, becomes manifest and then, I, and then I say I had a dream. And uh, what happens after dream? Everything becomes unmanifest again. Means hiding, just sitting. Sitting for an opportune time to manifest itself, correct? 
that is what is laya so we don't say dream got destroyed if you want to use the word destroyed that is fine laya happened dream laya of the dream happened dream got resolved dream became unmanifest laya means unmanifestation or demanifestation if there is a word like that you are you are muted amma adhik kumar jeevan you say srushti sthiti laya then laya means if you think that is a resolver or unmanifestation then how can you say then it is a creating correct how can you say it is creating therefore i am suggesting how you samji would say creation is a wrong word <laughs> okay the right word is what srishti manifestation manifestation that is why scientists love us because they are talking about creation in 6 days and it's a red rag for all the scientists this creation idea is a red rag means what mm, run away from these people scientists cannot handle that why because creation implies appearance of something from nothing that idea doesn't exist in our culture even for the child i mean you know furniture is being created from nothing furniture cannot be created wood has to be there for a wood trees have to be there tree also cannot be created out of nothing it needs so much nutrition all the panchabhutas are needed and the seed needs to be there only then tree comes tree is constantly coming from somewhere water is required nutrients are required therefore nothing is created from empty emptiness correct therefore you rightly said then how can there be creation correct that is what i am also asking how can there be creation so then uh, is that's why they say that uh, bija vriksha nyaya here i don't know what this bija vriksha nyaya is okay i have to study it properly i have not studied it properly i have heard it but i we don't uh, i have not experienced i have not seen chakra using that nyaya so i what is bija vriksha nyaya ma tell me it, it's like is a seed comes first or a, you know um the ruksha comes first which one comes oh, first oh that one that one okay yeah. nyaya can be used elsewhere here we are not talking about cyclic nature but this discussion will lead to the conclusion of the bija vriksha nyaya nyaya okay because there is no such thing as creation as you have rightly said there is only manifestation like the dream has become manifest and then dream has got quote and quote destroyed and then another dream has got quote and quote created and then removed resolved manifest and manifest manifest and manifest this is only possible because even god cannot destroy all matter correct yes fantastic this is why vedas and science there is no conflict at all very people will not argue with scientists and scientists have nothing to argue about with really? us really really there is a truth we go hand in hand we go hand in hand. different hey, come ji why we feel sometimes it's, oh, it's it's like oh that is right then i'm going to believe it and some suddenly sometimes oh my god is getting very complicated why can't i believe that why do i get that feeling more and more that is because you are the thinking person we are all we are all thinking people we have to process it we are processing it and sometimes while processing or digesting food a little bit of pain happens and so all this yeah then you have to take some some you know antacid and then you have to do all that you know ajwain has to be taken so all this we do so therefore the process is going on when the process goes on you will get all those kinds of experiences no i can't believe it no i think that's right that means what you are processing it oh sometimes i feel like oh my god this is beyond my you know how we think like oh this is beyond my reach or beyond my thinking am i trying to understand this or i uh, 
oh no, maybe I don't want this. You think it's uh, normal to have this kind of feeling? Yeah, it's normal. It's normal. I don't know, sometimes I feel like, oh, maybe, you know, this is too much for me. I don't think, you know, I can process this or I can think, is it true or not true? Like, uh, you know, creator or all these things. Oh my God, no, it's not true. And, oh, maybe it is true. I mean, Krishna is saying, Krishna is saying in Mahabharata, we love Mahabharata, we love Ramayana, we love all these things. And Krishna is saying, this is my real nature, the smiling nature. Don't think I am just your cousin and I am your friend and this and that, I am your brother-in-law and all that, you know. Uh, that's not, the, it's not the way to look at me. That's what, uh, and Arjuna knows that even before. And he's now getting his doubts clarified. So it's there for all of us. You know, all our songs has this. It's not too much. In fact, uh, reading your books also, Sanskrit books also will have these things. We are ignoring it. In this class, those are the things we take seriously. Whatever we've been ignoring all our life, that is the one we take seriously in this class. That's all. That's the only difference. Nothing wrong. We need some challenge. Na? Our brain ko challenge chahi hai na? We need to periodically work. Same thing studying. What is the use? We are already export all shlokas, memorize everything gone. Now, challenge ourselves a little bit. For our own benefit. Yeah. Prasad Gurujal. I just would like to challenge a question here. Um, so we normally use uh, the Avastana Traya uh, in all the three states, uh, um, a beautiful examples for understanding Vedanta. Now, um, a dream state happens to be an illusory state where no laws are followed. And in fact, here the object is not apart from the mind. Whereas in the waking state, uh, perfect laws are followed. And, uh, uh, and also, based on that, a lot of progress has been made in the empirical world uh, through science or whatever we consider. And here, the object is uh, uh, is apart from the mind. So there's a difference between uh, the way uh, we define uh, a dream, which is illusory, and uh, I'm talking about uh, in the empirical world. So uh, these are two distinct conscious experiences. Uh, in uh, in a waking state, there is perfect law and stability is there. Uh, the perfect law followed and there is stability. So having said that, how do we reconcile love between these two? Now, what is there to reconcile? Dream is dream and waking state is waking state. They are two different things. We are not saying they are identical. Did you say they are identical? Yes, we say that. I mean, identical in one sense in Vedanta, right? <laughs> Both are felt inside. We, we see yeah. that. Kalavanti, the Anamacharya said it. I didn't say it. Okay. Anamacharya said it. It was 500, 600 years ago. Kalavanti, the. So, and before that, also, they've been saying it. So, Kalavanti means it's like a dream, they say. Like a dream means it's as impermanent as dream is. That's the way to understand that statement. It doesn't mean dream and waking states are identical. If they're identical, we can't have a class like this. This class is happening not in dream. It is happening in our waking state only, right? So, Jagrata was found. No doubt about that. Only then, as you have said, continuity is there. You use the word stability. I'll use, I'll use the word continuity. Stability, I don't know. Because if you ask some people who are having very bad experiences and you ask them, is your life stable? And they will say, everything is unstable. That's what they will say. So, I don't know how to use the word stability. Continuity is there. Correct. So they are two different experiences. That's why they are avastha trayam. Agrad avastha, sapna avastha, sushupti avastha. Why should there be three states, three things when all are identical? Well, not identical. Okay. So, so we want to understand, we want to use the dream example to gain some insights about the waking state. Waking state is as anityam as I. There is a person who can't speak and who can't hear. And Sendupati, he's our, he delivers food. And so he's saying, ah, like that he said. So I wanted to acknowledge that. And uh, 
so so yeah so that's the thing so no they are not literally not identical identity only in the sense of impermanence and in the sense of projection also projection you have to you have to spend some time on this projection even though this empirical reality appears absolutely real real it's real only obviously our class is real class so i hope this class is real. and somebody says oh i why did you stop attending classes no it's all mithya and it's unreal class is going on why should i attend why should the real me understand attend unreal class if somebody says that's a slap on my face okay so it's all some reality is there useful reality yeah so so yeah it's not identical prasad mahodaya it's not identical there are some differences no doubt identity is just like dream is not absolutely real waking state is also not absolutely real or waking experiences are also not absolutely real that's enough if we can get that much that will take us towards paramarthika satyam then what is absolutely real then tell me and what is the relationship between that absolute reality and me because finally it's about me it's all about me correct yeah good uh, other thing uh, um, so when you said example of uh, uh, the snake and rope and uh, so uh, the snake does appear again uh, actually i was thinking about the difference uh, in different places we use the snake and rope versus uh, the mirrors example uh, mirrors is like uh, immediately i know that uh, it does appear again but not the snake snake immediately so <laughs> in vedanta <laughs> they are used at different places <laughs> so it is after sometimes snake will appear <laughs> not immediately but uh, mirrors yes it appears immediately again <laughs> fair enough fair enough so we have all these nice examples to give and definitely no two examples are uh, i literally identical but uh, yeah Good. I have another question, Zee Kumar Ji. Uh, going about Raja Vidya, uh, so there is a division between uh, uh, Jnata, Jnaya, and uh, uh, Jnana. So the division exists. Uh, exists in the sense it's because of my uh, Avidya that division exists between these two. So the knower and known. So. Uh, if if there is a distant object for example a planet somewhere which is unknown at this point of time which is uh which is not yet found does it, does it, uh, do i know that uh, that's the question i'm uh, posing to myself uh, do i know that in the sense in the empirical world we have known and unknown so what is uh, what does appear to me is known but unknown is uh, which which may appear in the future but at this point it is unknown uh, so a question is that uh, you may say that well uh, the knower does exist apart from the uh, uh, awareness so you are giving me the knowledge hey the knower does uh, does not exist from the apart from the uh, uh, from the uh, pure consciousness or uh, the awareness so uh, all that exists uh, has its being in this sat so now i understand oh you are talking about uh, uh, atma now i understood atma okay if i am the atma do i continue to have the division uh, between division between the knower and known so in other words like once i am jeevan mukta or uh, a knower of atma the, the, the do i pursue still the knower and known division or the uh, so otherwise the unknown would be known to me at this point because i am jivan mukta because earlier before i understood what is atma what uh, uh, what is pure consciousness i have the uh, illusionary illusionary effect of known and unknown so that's in the uh, in the uh, vyavaharika satya that is vyavaharika satya but uh, once i become known to uh, uh, what is atma atmaiva uh, Uh, are the pure consciousness then do i have still pursue the no or non division or just i know everything in the same consciousness and i'm done uh, i think uh, uh, oh, i am free 
Yeah. So the question is about no or non division. Okay. So the general experience is that the knower is different from the known object, which is different from the knowledge of the object that occurs in the mind of the knower. Okay. That's the triputi they call it. So jnata, nyayam, and jnana. That triputi is there. Now, what does uh, Atma Jnanam, what does it do? It says that this Jnanam is Atma, Jnata is Atma, Nyayam is also Atma. Okay? That, that Jnanam it gives. Now, once that knowledge happens, what happens to this Triputi? Correct? What happens to the Triputi, this division? Okay? Now, the Triputi is understood as Mithya. That is the only difference, right? Triputi will be there because without Triputi, there is no knowledge that can happen. Suppose you, you talk to a to a to a to a, to a Jeevan Mukta about this coronavirus, how it replicates. What are the processes that happen? Where did it originate from, etc.? The person has to understand. The person may need not know that, need not know that science behind the coronavirus, COVID-19, etc. And so something new is to be known. When something new is to be known, the object is there, separate, separate object. The mithya object is separate from the mithya body me. Okay, there is a separation between the two. Even though everything is Brahma, everything is Atma. The separation is there. Therefore, knowledge also has to happen. Knowledge of the object has to take place. So that apparent separation continues to be there. Apparent separation. Correct? Seeming separation. Correct? Yes. Seeming separation. Will be there. Seeming separation. Why? Because when you keep analyzing this, you will find that everything is Atma. Nothing really is separate from Atma. Like that. That idea is known. That is known. And therefore, seeming separation will be there. And so, just like you saw, the sun is revolving around the earth. Or, whatever, yeah, sun is revolving around the earth. After knowledge also, sun continues to revolve around the earth. Experience, I mean, the experience is there. The perception of sun revolving around the earth will continue to remain. It won't go. Perception won't go. But the knowledge will not take the perception to mean that the sun actually is moving around the earth. The knowledge removes that, that ignorance it removes. Correct? So therefore, this, we, therefore, this thing is that we have to be, the general idea that is portrayed in books and many places is that once the self-realization happens, then the world disappears. Then Triputi disappears, correct? And so there is an expectation that some magic is going to happen. Yes, some magic has happened. What is the magic that happens? Oh my God, this is a great magic show. That awareness has come. That is the greatest magic in one's life that can happen. Oh my God, have this magic I've taken to be serious. I've taken it to be too serious. Okay, that is the that is the revelation that's going to happen, and so my sense is that something magic is going to happen. That it, 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 sometimes there is the expectation that all my bad experiences will go away by Brahma Vidya. I will no longer have any unpleasant experience. Shastram doesn't say that anywhere. Upanishad doesn't talk like that at all. And because why? Because unpleasant experiences belong to the body. Body will have has the ability to experience, and experience means pleasant and unpleasant both. Ito patni eriyar dima. Pare. So that, that's it. So therefore, elimination of triputi is cognitive. 
cognitive exactly like this understanding the status of the pot cognitive purely cognitive and once you understand it nothing happens to the pot the the, the perception also doesn't change but my understanding changes dramatic change in how i see things correct yeah, I mean, basically, I was, it, it actually emanated from thinking about Vritti Jnana, which is Avidya, uh, but this person has got uh, this Farupa Jnana, which is actually realization of the Atma. So it is the whole, uh, because that's the, uh, the truth uh, in, in terms of knowledge also, whereas all the knowledge which we gain through Vritti Jnana is Avidya. So that's why I'm trying to distinguish the moment I get this uh, uh, Swarupa Jnana, then uh, my distance uh, object, which is not known to me earlier, is known to me or not. So then it's, it is still, like you said, now I understood like uh, this will continue. That part I understood, like uh, the world will continue. So your question is something that is absolutely unknown to me. Yes. Will it be something? I give, let's give an example. Okay. There is, there is, a, there is a solar system which is the nearest solar system. Never, I never heard of it. I never know it also. I don't know anything about that system. Okay. Another system which is like our solar, that I like our solar system. It is there, it's there, okay. And, but I don't know anything about it right now. If I study Bhagavad Gita, will I come to know about that? If I, if I study, hey, this is a nice idea. If I study Bhagavad Gita, will I become a good doctor? All the medical science that I don't know that all these doctors have worked so hard year after year, four, four years and then another four years and then internship and this and that. They keep on saying all these things. Hey, sometimes I ask them, are you a doctor or not a doctor? This is all I need to know. Okay. You said everything years you are studying. I did this internship and that internship. Have you become a doctor? Are you allowed to practice medicine? I mean, can we come and see you? Are you allowed to write medications, prescriptions? And so that it looks like that takes some time. So I should become a doctor once I know Atma. Correct? Answer is what? What is the answer to the question? Vaidya, what is the answer? What is the, what is the answer? You are a new The answer is no. <laughs> no. Answer is no. If the answer was yes, you know what will happen? I can't conduct a Zoom class like this. Because the, the rush, there will too much, too many people will be there. Because, <laughs> I, because I can become an engineer, I can become a doctor, I can become a psychologist, I can become this, I can become an architect, I can become anything by studying Vedanta. So everybody will just line up. And so that won't work, my dear. It won't work, even though the student asked the teacher the question in Mundaka Upanishad. Kaspinnu bhagavo vijnate sarvam idam vijnatam bhavati iti. Tell me, hey, okay, Shaunaka asked this question to Atharva, asked the question. Tell me that, knowing which. Everything is as good as known. This is a famous question. Teach me that. Everything is as good as known. Not everything is known. Means if, if the tattvam of everything is known. The satyam of everything is known. But that does not make the student a doctor and an engineer and an architect. And now I have so many roles because I know everything. Huh? Everything applicable only to Bhagavan, Sarvajna, Sarvavit. Difference between Sarvajna and Sarvavit is what? Sarvajna, Sarvam Janati. I know everything as Atma, everything is Mithya and the truth of Mithya is Satyam. That much I know. That is Sarvajna Then the Shastra use another word called Sarvavit. Sarvam Veti iti Sarvavit. If knowing everything in all detail, that is Bhagavan. That is Bhagavan. Sarvavit. 
I can only become a Sarvajna, but not a Sarvajit. Correct? Sarvajit, not possible. Why? Because this body is limited, this mind also is limited, and the mind's capacity is therefore limited. And it will know what it knew and whatever else it has to know. Maybe it's now when it is smarter because of all the logic and all the thinking. My the ability to think and process may have become better. But I still have to know what I don't know. So therefore, I still have to get, if I want to become a doctor, I have to get that degree. Thankfully. It's because this person is Vedanta, great Vedanta, scholar, teacher, etc. Give him a MBBS degree. Medical degree. No, nobody will do that. Nobody should do that. So we don't have to go all the way to galaxies and all. Right here, the knowledge that is there that we don't know. What we know is so little compared to the amount of knowledge that is out there. Okay. All that we know has attributes, so it is Savidya, right? Uh, because it's attributed the knowledge. You can say, can I say that? Uh, whereas repeat. the the whole uh, knowledge, the the pure consciousness is the whole knowledge which is like pure. Whereas without attributes, uh, even the knowledge also without doesn't have attributes. All the knowledge, in other words, it is like part knowledge which I would know in the in the uh, uh, vavaharika, whichever I know, means like it has got such attributes. It, it's partly I know, rather it's not full knowledge. Whereas uh, the pure consciousness is the full knowledge, uh, to put it simply. Yeah. So the question can be confusing to many people. And why are you asking the question also can may not be clear to many people. Okay. So you're talking about knowledge of the attributeless versus knowledge of that which has attributes. Okay. And uh, so yeah, the knowledge of the attributeless Nirguna Brahma. Right. And the beauty is whatever has attributes every object that we know we've invented we have maintained we, have, we use etc has attributes and the knowledge of that object is always incomplete knowledge of the object limited object is always limited it's amazing it's so amazing it is this is a very limited small object we must know everything about what by now no so much we don't know so much we do about the mud, about the clay and all, so much we don't know. Still a lot of research is going on. When I did uh, this thing, I was doing my um, bachelor's in, in my university. They had the project, senior project was drying of sand. We are supposed to study the sand, how it becomes wet and how it becomes dry, what is the rate of drying and this and that. Can you believe that? This we are doing. Okay. And some research papers and all we try to look at look at them. So the limited object can never be completely known. That is why research is constantly progressing and growing. Otherwise, research should reduce the amount of research as so much has been done. So we know more and more, and therefore we need to know less and less. We need to know less and less. We need to know less and less. No, it's not like that. Anybody who wants to do research at any time in any field, always open. Okay. Whereas, what about Brahma Vidya? After Brahma Vidya, research corridors open. No, no research corridors open for Brahma Vidya. Once it's known, Sarvam Vijnate, uh, Brahma Jnane, Sarvam Vijnatam Bhavati. Everything is as well known. Because everything is Brahma. And that should mean something to me. It is not simply, simply an academic exercise. That is also another problem. People say academic. This is a very academic pursuit. Now, if you look at the lives of all our Acharyas, it did not, doesn't look to me it's an academic pursuit. And if it is academic, they will say it in the teaching. Hey, I'm teaching this subject. It's an academic pursuit. No, no nowhere it says that. They say this is what Moksha is. Moksha is not academic. Moksha is real. Moksha is important for all of us. And we are seeking it. Okay, so we'll conclude with that. Thank you for those questions, uh, Prasadji. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Dhanvantaraye 
अमृतकलशहस्ताय सर्वामय विनाशनाय त्रैलोक्यनाथाय श्री महाविष्णवे नम ओं नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय धन्वंतर ये अमृतकलशहस्ताय सर्वामय विनाशनाय त्रैलोक्यनाथाय श्री महाविष्णवे नम ओं नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय धन्वंतर ये अमृतकलशहस्ताय सर्वामय विनाशनाय त्रैलोक्यनाथाय श्री महाविष्णवे नम थैंक यू गुरु जी थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू विल सी समू टुमारो